Okay, so recently we've been doing a podcast, the Meat Puppets podcast, and we've been trying to speed up our process by using AI. One of the things we need to do, which is taking a lot of time, is writing a lot of show notes and generating everything else you need to do apart from the original podcast. We've been using a large language model called Claude. This is Claude. And um, I'm just going to show you just a quick tip on how to use a transcript um, to generate everything you need, and it's pretty incredible. So let's get into that. If you go to claude.ai, you'll need to create a login. I'm not sure if they're still accepting um, people, but you might be put onto a wait list. Luckily, I'm in there. So what I'm just going to quickly do is log in. So you're not going to see this bit. So there we are. I'm in my Claude section. Um, and you left in a search box at the top here. You can ask it something and, you know, you can attach some files to start a new chat. So let's think about the things that we're going to need when we release a podcast. So we're going to need a show description. We're going to need a show title. Uh, we're going to need to generate some tweets, maybe some content for LinkedIn. And maybe there's something else. So first thing you need is a transcript from your show now if you're editing in something uh, traditional maybe resolve or maybe audition or pro tools even um it's not so easy to generate that we've been using a thing called descript this is descript what it's really good at it's good at loads of things so what it's really good at is um transcribing text and what you end up with is a um a transcript of everything you've said in your podcast so this is our transcript here you'll see up at the top um so, and getting a transcript out of here is super quick. But if I go into the publish settings here, and um, if I go into export, transcripts, i literally got a copy to clipboard. So you don't even need to export it. Now, I would say do export it as a text file because you, you want to refer to it later, but I can just literally hit copy to clipboard. And now I've copied that uh, entire podcast to the clipboard. Next, I'm going to jump back into Claude. Okay, and we're back into Claude. And one thing I've noticed um, about Claude that ChatGPT doesn't do is that you can... There you go. I've just control V, so paste. I've just pasted all that text. Because the text is over a certain length, it's just attached it as a file, so I don't need to export it. I can literally copy it, paste it in. Um, next, I need to ask it to do something for me. And this is where you get into uh, what would be grandly called prompt engineering. What I've spent a lot of time doing is writing a prompt uh, which is uh, generic enough that I can just cut and paste into Claude with the transcript of an episode and it'll be the content of that transcript which really gives me my individual uh, responses from Claude. So let me just go over to my prompt. So this is the prompt I have here. I keep it in a Google Doc. I keep on updating it but this is where I'm up to at the moment. So First of all, I need to give uh, Claude some context. So I've just written a little paragraph up here. So I'm a podcast producer. Please use the attached transcription. That's what we pasted in before of a podcast called The Meat Puppets. Now Claude knows what it is we're doing and who I am, which will really affect its response. Now I'm going to tell you what the podcast is about, which is about how two media professionals turn tech startup entrepreneurs document their successes and failures in an honest and transparent way. I don't know whether I need to do this, but I thought I should give it some idea of style um, for how I'd like things written or just some background info on the podcast. So now I've told it who I am. I've told it what I'm doing. Now I need to tell it what I'd like it to do. So using the style of language contained in the attached description, um, both hosts are British, so please avoid overtly American slang like Buddy. We're British and noticed when I was first prompting this, it would come out with a lot of Americanisms, which is what I didn't want. Um, please make sure you complete all tasks thoroughly and always refer to the transcript for tone and subject areas. Our target audience are creatives who are interested in the AI world, along with potential investors who might want to buy our company FluxQX in five years. So here's the body of the um, prompt, and it is quite a long prompt if you look at it. I've asked it to do me 10 different things. One, this is I've numbered them all, so I'll just try and give it an order. I want it to write 10 short, pithy title options for this app. Uh, it should grab people's attention, so you're obviously going to need a title. 
Next, I'm going to need a description uh, for this episode. I'll have written in there, written in the same fold and style as the podcast is presented. And then here, I've just asked it to include our Twitter handle, LinkedIn, things like that. Then next, I've asked it to pick out 10 quotes from the pasted transcripts only. Now, this is important that I've put this bit in just because I've found that it starts to hallucinate things. So it'll pick lines that we haven't even said. Um, and this is really so we can easily build the trailer. Um, this next bit is pretty important. There should be sections lifted directly from the transcript, i.e. don't make it up. Do not generate ima or imagine lines that don't exist in the transcript. Very important. I've asked it to select five quotes from me, Martin Raleigh, and five quotes from Paul, just so we've got a balance. And um, as I said, the sections should clearly communicate the subject matter of the podcast. Can you also include timestamps with each quote? So if I just jump back into Descript for a second, you'll see up here, when you go to export your uh, transcripts, you have this option to include speaker labels. So that's me or Paul, that's these bits here. And then you also have the opportunity to put timestamps on the uh, speaker labels. So the things that I've pasted into Claude will also have timestamps. So that hopefully will mean that Claude will know where in the timeline these things are going to be. And that will relate to these times here. Next, can you generate a list of detailed topics in this episode of the podcast? So this is for the show notes, just so we can pull topics out. Um, next, 30 meta tags for the release. Please write as comma separated values. Uh, this is really uh, so we can use that for social media and we can tag everything up. Uh, next, we need to obviously tell people that there's a podcast there. So four tweets we could use to promote the episode. And I've asked it to write four LinkedIn posts. I have done another tutorial on this showing you how you can easily turn part of your podcast into a blog post and it will have your opinion. It's really good. Um, and then if we just jump back full screen, the last bit that I've written, you should be able to see that there. Um, another thing I am really worried about, and I suppose all content creators should be worried about, is um, that you might have said something really bad or that might offend people. And it's the last thing we really want to do. So I've asked it to kind of do a legal check and have a sense check to look through. And this is why I'm using Claude as well. Claude is particularly sensitive to stuff that it think might offend people. So it does bring up stuff. So here we go. So this is the entire prompt, which I've just got saved inside um, Google Drive. I'm literally going to select all of this and control C, copy it. I'm going to go back over to Claude, where we've pasted this transcript. And I'm literally going to paste in that prompt. Now, you notice that didn't attach as text. I'm not sure exactly how many characters you can get away with before it attaches it. But uh, I did write an um, original prompt was really long. And it did paste it in and it didn't work so well. So let's see what happens when I click go. Okay, so it's immediately pasted everything in there. And we're waiting for Claude. Waiting for Claude to start writing. I'm going to time this. Here we go. So now it's writing. Here we go. So it's coming up as I asked for my title options. It's now writing a description. Butter up buttercups. That's funny. Um, you notice it's written in that stuff that I asked about our Twitter account. Now it's pulling quotes with time codes and they're actually not bad actually it's pulling that out now it's jumping onto the topic so you can see it's systematically working its way through and this is great it's put time stamps on all the topics covered which if you're doing a youtube channel for chapters here's me meta tags here's me tweets a complete with emojis amazing and this is all in real time. I haven't sped this up. I did try doing this with ChatGPT, but um, it just took too long and it doesn't like loads of requests at once. So Claude is your one for this. So it's writing me some LinkedIn posts. So they're all coming out. And now it's doing a blog post. So it's doing a blog post for me, which is actually really good. 
It's got something's wrong. So it says, as a former photographer, which I'm not. I mean, I have taken photos, but I'm not a former photographer. So you need to sense check this. But, okay, now I'm getting to a blog for Paul. And it'd be up to Paul to sense check this. And now, uh, let's just get to the bottom of this. Okay, still going, still going. Here we go, potential issues. So the discussion of copyright disputes like the Dust Junkies versus Bon Jovi case in the uh, and the unauthorized EZE sample could potentially open the podcast up to legal claims. True. Uh, brief mentions legal downloading and copyright infringement. There is. It's good. When testing AI voice generation tools, care should be taken not to impersonate any real individuals. This is true. References to consuming illegal substances as part of the music industry lifestyle in the late early 80s and 90s could offend some listeners. I don't think we did that, so I think it's imagined that. The hosts make jokes about stock music that can be seen as insulting. This is true. Uh, discussions around copyright law are complex and speakers should avoid giving definitive legal advice. We do do that, but it's great for the, that somebody's thinking like that. And some choices around topics like mental health, describing AI voice, uh, the AI voice as depressed could read as insensitive. So I'm sh that's taken, what, under two minutes? And all of this stuff is really, really useful. Um, let's just have a look at the title, see what it did. The AI copyright conundrum, not bad. Uh, who really owns AI content? The legal loopholes of AI. Now, you don't have to use any of this. But what it does is it gets you thinking in a certain way. And what my next thing would do is I just go in and edit this to make it mine. But being able to generate this in under two minutes from literally cutting and pasting my transcript and then cutting and pasting a prompt is just incredible. Absolutely game changing for me. Um, feel free to use it. Give it a go. Obviously, make sure you check everything. It does give you a warning at the bottom here. Links provided by Claude may not always be valid or up to date. And like anything with LLM, check it because, you know, this stuff's new, but so useful. Normally, I'd, I'd either spend a day writing this myself or ask someone who's better at writing than me to have a go at it. I think this is phenomenal. So there you go. So using Claude and Descript, a transcript and a prompt to generate loads of really useful stuff to help you distribute your 